Good afternoon. Uh, we are from the University of Illinois at Chicago. We're graduate nursing students, and our presentation today will be about kidney stones um, by Ashley Englehart, Cynthia McFadden, and Megan Kinyamas. A little about how the kidneys work. We typically have two kidneys, each the size of a fist, and they're located on either side of the spine at the lowest level of the rib cage. The general functions include removing waste products and excess fluid from the body by filtering blood through small clusters of blood vessels and tubes and producing urine as the final product. Um, the kidneys also regulate the body's salt, potassium, and acid, and it produces hormones to help regulate things like blood pressure, the production of red blood cells, producing an active form of vitamin D for strong, healthy bones, and the control of metabolism of calcium. This is a closer look at kidney stones in the kidney. And here we have a healthy kidney versus a kidney with kidney stones on the bottom right. Here are the different types of kidney stones. Knowing the type of kidney stone helps determine its cause and may give clues on how to reduce the risk of getting more kidney stones in the future. Calcium stones are the most common, usually in the form of calcium oxalate. Oxalate is a substance made daily from the liver or absorbed from your diet. Certain fruits, vegetables, nuts, and chocolate are high in oxalate, so it's important to monitor the foods you eat to prevent kidney stones. Struvite stones are associated with urinary tract infections. Um, they grow rapidly and increase in size. Uric acid stones, most common risk factor is low urine pH. These stones form when too much fluid is lost, for example, with chronic diarrhea, malabsorption or severe dehydration. Cystin stones are a result of cystinuria, a genetic disorder. It causes the kidneys to secrete too much of the amino acid cysteine. Kidney stones have no single underlying cause. Um, they form when urine becomes too concentrated, allowing minerals and salts to stick together and form the stones. Hydration is key and consuming large amounts of fluids aids in passing the stones and relieving pain. One in 10 people will develop a kidney stone and some risk factors include making less than one liter of urine every day, dehydration, uh, diet, so high in salt, sugar, or protein, excess weight, obesity, certain supplements and medications, existing medical conditions such as irritable bowel syndrome, chronic diarrhea, repeated urinary tract infections and hyperparathyroidism, a family or personal history, and pregnancy. During the later stages of pregnancy, as the growing fetus pushes on the bladder, women may drink less frequently to avoid using the bathroom as much, which can lead to kidney stone formation. Symptoms of kidney stones include severe pain in the back side or groin, chills and fever, pain or difficulty urinating and blood in the urine, or nausea and vomiting, and some additional symptoms could be cloudy or foul-smelling urine, burning while urinating, and then a persistent need to urinate, urinating more often than usual, or urinating in small amounts. Testing and diagnosis for kidney stones include blood tests for calcium, phosphoric, uric acid, and electrolytes. Blood tests can determine whether you have too much uric acid or calcium, which can cause stones to form. The urine can also be analyzed to check for crystal forming elements, such as bacteria, blood, and white blood cells. Blood urea nitrogen, or BUN, and creatinine are blood tests that the doctor uses to check for how well your kidneys are working. And the stones that are passed in the urine can also be examined to determine their type. A blockage can be determined using tests like an ultrasound of the kidney or an x-ray of the stomach. Small kidney stones are treated without invasive treatment. Drinking plenty of water, pain relievers, and medical therapy are common treatments to pass smaller stones. So diuretics or pills that increase the water and salt removed by the body and pain medications like acetaminophen or naproxen sodium, which are more commonly known as Tylenol and Aleve can be given. Shockwave treatment is also common for small and medium stones. High energy sound waves break up the kidney stone into little pieces so that it can be passed through the urine. And that's shown here on the right side in the picture labeled two. 
A scope can also be used to remove a small stone from the kidney or ureter, and that's known as ureteroscopy. A small wire with a camera attached is inserted into the urethra and into the bladder up to the stone's location to remove it. Then larger stones may require invasive treatment. Surgery can be used for that. So a small incision can be made in the back to remove the stones. That's shown here in the bottom right photo. And 50% of people with kidney stones may have a parathyroid tumor in the neck that should be removed for kidney stone prevention. Some general prevention tips for kidney stones are hydrating with plenty of water and making diet adjustments to prevent the stones from coming back. For example, to prevent uric acid stones, you should cut down on red meats, organ meats, shellfish, alcohol, and sugar-sweetened food or drinks. And to prevent calcium oxalate stones, you should cut back on sodium or salt and pair calcium rich foods such as yogurt, milk, collard greens, oranges, and broccoli with oxalate rich foods such as peanuts, spinach, beets, and sweet potatoes. The diet changes according to the type of stone you usually get, so those changes would be recommended by your provider. And then you can also talk to your provider about preventative medications depending on the type of stone you typically get. And that is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.